สันนมสันนมสันหนาวกว่ามีอีเดนที่เทิงเทิงเวียดนาม Breakfast at the U.S. Ambassador's residence in Hanoi, with a side order of Vietnamese language lessons. I can speak what is a pretty difficult language, and I speak it pretty well. I think more often than not, people like to get out and mix it up, really learn what's going on in the countries where they serve, and make a difference. The closest most locals will ever come to a U.S. ambassador abroad is a passing motorcade or a heavily staged official event. But given the tortured relations between the United States and Vietnam over the years, U.S. ambassador Ted Osius is dispensing with traditional protocols to help create a new reference point on U.S.-Vietnam relations. His mission in Vietnam started with a 1,200-mile bike ride the length of the country as a U.S. consular officer in 1995, soon after official relations between the two countries were restored. His bike diplomacy continues to be his signature style for interacting with the Vietnamese people, as well as local government officials. While crossing the former demilitarized zone, once separating North from South Vietnam, a local woman offered a rare but indelible Vietnamese perspective on what they call here the American War. And I asked her, so why are there so many ponds right here? And she said, well, that's where the Americans drop bombs. And she said, she, uh, she went on to say, they dropped, uh, they dropped bombs in my village. They dropped bombs, and I lost family members. And I said, well, I, I need you to know I'm American, and I work for the U.S. Embassy. And she said, well, Today, today, you and I are brother and sister. Save for the war museum, mostly for tourists, it's almost impossible to find any traces or mention of the war, yet alone get anyone wanting to talk about it, especially the younger Vietnamese, who have little knowledge of the war. So they've known a lot of war. Ours was one. In some ways, it more seared into our consciousness than into theirs. Yes, it was very painful for both sides. Yes, they lost a huge number of people. But they, in many ways, have been quicker to move on and look toward the future than we have. Focus on him and love. He relies on his Facebook page to circumvent official channels and the government-controlled media to communicate as directly as he can with the Vietnamese people on significant issues like TPP, the new Trans-Pacific Partnership Trade Agreement. But you're not doing this alone. More than half of our exports to Vietnam are agricultural. And there'll be many more opportunities for our exporters to get into this market when the Vietnamese lower their tariffs. The idea that jobs will be sucked out of the United States and will go to Vietnam I don't think it's correct. So those jobs have already left the United States. We're talking about industries like uh, making shoes or apparel that involve a, a lot of people. And those jobs will shift within this region for the most part. Also on the agenda for the first presidential state visit, a broadening of defense agreements with America's former enemy in Southeast Asia, now its new best friends on the South China Sea where more than half of the world's seaborne cargo passes through. The Chinese have been very aggressive, and in some ways they've been pushing the Southeast Asian countries towards us because they've been so aggressive in building islands, in challenging the status quo in the South China Sea, and the United States stands for respect for international law. As much as Vietnam tries to put the war behind it, a new generation of Vietnamese are still dealing with some of its dangerous legacies. Unexploded ordnance and environmental contamination from the Agent Orange defoliant, suspected of causing crippling health issues for successive generations of Vietnamese. If you're honest about the past, you can have a very different kind of future than if you try to whitewash the past. So we're very honest and very direct about the past. One is in the cleanup of dioxin, popularly known as Agent Orange. And we've had some real success in Da Nang in cleaning up 
the, the dioxin that was left, especially near the, the Da Nang airport. He and the administration are also hoping to leverage the TPP negotiations to make progress on one of the more sensitive issues between the two countries, human rights. This is really important. Yeah, I have it. I always, I carry this card. It's, it's de examples of demonstrable progress on human rights. I've given this card to members of the Politburo. I point out, these are the things that we're asking you to do. We couldn't be more clear. It fits on a card. The Vietnamese could still choose, rather than have economic growth, rather than have trade with us in Europe, they could choose to throw bloggers in jail. 18, 19, 20. I'm white, my husband's black, and our kids are brown. Uh, so we, we represent, I think, you know, one of the things that's really great about America. Ambassador Osius isn't the first gay U.S. ambassador, but he and his spouse, Clayton Bond, have become very visible leaders of the LGBT movement in the diplomatic corps, and now sweeping across Southeast Asia, especially here in Vietnam, where a ban on same-sex marriages was lifted shortly after they arrived less than two years ago. Is this more of a personal agenda or an official agenda? Well, it's about representing equality, and it's about representing human rights. And it's very much an official agenda. The agenda of this administration is to, to keep pressing the envelope on human rights, and that includes the rights of LGBTI persons. Be very gentle. Because my family and I are visible, we do more by example than through just talking. We show that you can be a same-sex couple and raise children and do it successfully. For anyone who thinks that the ambassador's sexuality is a distraction, I think they should come here and see how it's being embraced by people. Nguyen Quy Duc, a former NPR and BBC correspondent, owns a cafe on the same block as the ambassador's residence and is a close observer of the Vietnamese reaction to the ambassador's diplomatic and personal style. It's a non-issue. As long as he does his work, he carries himself with dignity and his spouse and together in places have incredible appeal to the people here. The fact that I show respect for Vietnamese language and culture and history, the Vietnamese people, the fact that I show that respect, that I, I clearly enjoy being here, I think that has helped my mission. I really love being here. I feel like I won the lottery because I care about this country. Uh, to be able to come here and do this job at this time in history is a, a really rare privilege. I feel lucky every day. For the PBS NewsHour, Mike Saray reporting in Hanoi, Vietnam.